thanks very much for inviting me to um, have this opportunity to speak, and I hope that I can add some additional dimensions. Um, as was mentioned, we had a, a, a seminar yesterday at the World Bank where we looked uh, much more in depth, uh, for really for the whole morning, at some regulatory issues, and then in the afternoon we looked at seed quality control. So I'm going to try and bring some different elements of, of both um, of both parts of that together, but perhaps more specifically on the regulations. Um, so I think it, it sort of fits into the, the, the question that we're looking at, how, how do the, the seed companies that we heard, learned about in, in, the, in the African in, in, the, in the Access Index, what, what is the business environment, what is the, the conditions that these companies are doing business in? And I think, you know, especially in Africa, but in, in other really sort of right around the world, when you look at, at what are some of the obstacles to seed trade, you see that very often there's companies and large and small companies are facing problems with small and fragmented markets. And what do we mean by that? So that each country has their own rules and their own regulations so that you can test it and release a variety in one country, but you can't sell it just across the border um, without going through other sort of cumbersome and costly procedures. The really sort of, when you talk about a seed regulatory environment, it's, I think it's useful to think there are four main elements to that in terms of the variety acceptance. Are we going to accept the variety or not accept the variety? Uh, the seed certification, which is about the quality, the, the quality assurance to the farmers. I mean, farmers need to know what they're putting into the ground is a good quality seed. Obviously, you have other traditional issues, such as the phytosanitary uh, controls, the phytosanitary issues. You want to prevent the, the spread of plant and, and pest diseases. And then uh, particularly important in seed, too, is, is the intellectual property rights. If you have companies that are investing in, in tens of millions of dollars and, and many years de developing a seed technology, they need to know that their technology is secure and that they're going to ma maintain uh, some sort of ownership over that property. But you find that, again, with the, this problem of the regulatory environment, that the current conditions of, of fragmented markets, each country with their own rules, make uh, private investment risky and expensive uh, for, for the private sector. Uh, historically, there are many different national seed systems that were dominated by the, by the government parastatals. This is now changing with liberalization, but in many cases the rules of, of the seed industry haven't caught up. So you, you find, still find outdated rules and regulations that aren't necessarily conducive to the, to the new paradigm. Uh, some of the implications of these trade obstacles, I, mean, I think it's, it's very clear to, to see, and people in this room will know much better uh, from their own research on agricultural production than I do, but, but the yields are, are basically not improving. I mean, there, there have been some gains, but, but not nearly enough. Um, the farmers are, are not achieving the kinds of, of increased productivity they need to, to move out of poverty or to feed themselves, and particularly in Africa, you find that they're becoming increasingly dependent on food imports from the rest of the world. Um, farmers are left with few options for, for, for seed. Um, high cost of, of small markets mean that seed companies uh, may register just a few varieties and hold others back. If you have to test and to go through all of these different regulatory procedures, you may just release one or two seeds in the country, which contributes again to that problem of farmers not having very many choices. It also puts a heavy burden on the public agriculture research. We heard, we heard a lot in the, in the last presentation about the trying to get a balance between pub, what public sector can do best and what private sector can do best, but the, the regulations that's blocking private companies out of the, of the seed industry, you're overburdening, in many cases, the, 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 the state system as well. Um, and then not only that, but you find that, that actually countries have an inability to meet their own quality rules. Um, either the, the old existing regulations, or as I'll talk about in a moment, some of these new, new efforts to reform, countries still are not able to, to meet their own rules and regulations. They don't have the capacity. Um, I think kind of an interesting example in, in Uganda, and even where they have a, a so-called ISTA, International Seed Testing Association accredited lab, they, they, they've got all the so-called institutions on paper, it looks like their system, they, they're following the rules, they have the regulatory environment, but they don't have the capacity, with the result that the input quality is so poor and un unreliable that the returns on so-called hybrid seed, which really a lot of it's counterfeit seed, and fertilizer is a negative 12.2%. So the farms are actually quite rational not to plant hybrid seed and not to improve their, their yields. Um, and then on the intellectual property front side, uh, UPOV and other treaties provide for intellectual property rights on seed, yet many national policies contradict these agreements. You might have um, parts of the national legislation that are still not conducive to promoting this kind of seed trade and private investment. Uh, where some countries require the pro all the parental lines to be handed over to the, to the national agricultural research system. Uh, for variety tests, there can be restrictions and even outright bans on private variety maintenance. And, you know, I said yesterday, I started thinking, it's like the handing over your parental lines. It's like if you own the master copies of the Beatles 
discs and that you've got to give them to the company that makes the CDs. It's, it's about as much sense as, as that. So you wouldn't want to hand over your intellectual property to the, to the research center. Um, efforts to improve sea trade. Now, what, 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 are, what are people doing about this? And I guess a lot of effort over really whew, going back almost 20, 25, or even 30 years now has been put into regional harmonization. Uh, SADC was one of the first um, RECs, these regional economic communities that got into it. Um, it's been a very popular approach. USAID has done a lot to support uh, regional harmonization. Uh, SADC, COMESA, the EAC uh, as well, ECOWAS, UMOA. But in other parts of the world, which I know a little bit less about, but um, others may wish to add to the discussion, the Andean PAC, Curacao, Central America, ASEAN, uh, and others, um, often based on the, a lot of it sort of driven or, or modeled on what the, the EU's approach of having a common catalog for the region. I'll say a little bit more about that, I think, on the next slide. The goals of harmonization being that you, you can speed variety introduction if you're all following the same rules. You can eliminate duplicate procedures. We're not going to retest the seed if we're going to recognize the test results of another country. We can minimize costs. We can create a larger market, uh, provide greater quality assurance because we're all providing, you know, we're, we're now following certain minimum standards on our rules and regulations. Um, and then I, I think also the, this idea that it would create space for the public researchers to focus on the neglected crops and the public agencies to do what they do best for the private sector to, you know, focus on maize and other crops that they love to to handle. The rules, the regional rules and regulations, they typically cover uh, most of the regional systems that I showed you on the last slide, but typically cover common procedures for, and I apologize for throwing out some acronyms here, the, the DUS and VCU test. The, the DUS test is a particular kind of uh, seed trial to show that it's distinct, uniform, and stable. Often countries will require one or maybe up to two or three years of DUS test before it can be released. And then VCU is the value in cultivation and use test that shows that it's going to be really good value for the farmers. So again, that's another sort of maybe one or two years of, 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 of testing. So most regional rules provide common procedures for that. And the idea being, again, that if we're going to follow common procedures, we can all recognize each other's tests. We can create a regional catalog of registered varieties. Um, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead, but I'm sure I'll say in the next slide, or if I, if I don't, I just want to make the point. But then there's the problem that if you don't recognize, or if the, if the countries that are implementing these tests don't have the capacity, and you say, okay, it's being entered in the, in the regional catalog by a neighbor I don't trust, then that's where you get into problems with even recognizing what's in the regional catalog. And the same for the, for the common certification rules. The, the, there, there are international systems based on OECD procedures for field inspection, and ISTA is the International Seed Testing Association rules for laboratory analysis. So there's, um, again, these regional rules will have common certification procedures, once more with the idea that there should be mutual recognition of the country seed certificates, but again, giving rise to questions about your neighbor's capacity. Some of these regional rules, um, SADC, for instance, uh, has common list, uh, a pest list to try and minimize the need for phytosanitary inspection. Uh, others haven't quite gotten that far. Uh, others are working on it, but then you find that the pest lists are out of date. They don't necessarily have the scientific research to back the, the pest lists. Few regional rules, and uh, the harmonized rules so far, cover um, or provide specific guidance on protecting intellectual property rights that go beyond the, uh, the UPA for the other uh, sort of regional conventions and, and don't really address some of these other fundamental bottlenecks, such as requiring varieties to be handed over to the NARS and so forth. Risk of harmonization, um, time consuming. As I said, SADC started discussing this. I mean, David Gizelquist will, will know much better than I, but it's in the 1980s, or maybe even before, uh, when they started to discuss. Um, SAD, uh, some of the others have been a little bit quicker. They sort of more or less you know, copied and pasted some of what the other uh, countries have, had done. But uh, even uh, COMESA, where they'll tell you that it's been going very quickly, they've been at it for now about five years. They've agreed on the regional regulations, but then even after you agree the regulations, now you've got to domesticate the regulations. You've got to amend your national seed laws before the rules become applicable. And then even after they become applicable, legally applicable, you still have to build the institutions and the capacity to implement them. So it's still many years off from, from really being able to follow these, these regulations. Um, and there's the point of you cannot implement or afford the advanced seed rules. And, and particularly, the, these very advanced and demanding certification tests have real important implications for small seed companies. The seed companies that in principle should, or in theory anyway, should have uh, as much if not greater capacity sometime to reach the small farmers, the ones that we're here talking about today and trying to reach. Uh, okay, there's the point I, I said I was going to make about the mutual recognition demands trust. And, and if you're neighboring, your neighbor country, you know they don't have capacity. So in some cases, actually, you're quite wise not to trust them. Um, 
But then I suppose the question it begs the question of are, are the rules right? Are we trying to to run before we can walk? Are we trying to walk before we can crawl by setting these advanced rules? Um, risk as well that reform-minded countries can be held back by less progressive partners. Um, and, and yeah, I, let's see, I've got two minutes. Um, advanced rules typically overlook indigenous land race. That's another important point. You've got the, all these indigenous seeds, but there, there's really relatively little space for the advanced for those in the advanced rules. Um, let me try and skip ahead because I do want to talk about this. Um, what are some alternatives? What else could countries do? What what other sorts of approaches are out there? Uh, automatic variety registration would be one. Let's just cut to the chase and accept the varieties. Uh, South Africa, for instance, accepts just one season of DUS tests. Bangladesh accepts test data from other private companies, uh, not requiring their own, their own national system. Um, except other national variety lists um, involve private agencies and seed certification, allow private variety maintenance. There's no reason why a company like Monsanto shouldn't be allowed to maintain its own variety. That's what they do. Um, and then on the, on the third cert certification, simple risk-based approaches such as quality declared seed. It's a lower standard than, than the very demanding standard, but at least, again, it's, I think it's an example. If you can implement it, at least it's better than nothing. Um, providing exclusive rights to public varieties might be another option. With these other approaches that have been tried, they've had great impact. Turkey, for instance, accepts data from private companies. And within five years of doing that, the number of maize hybrids increased from 24 to 114 and average yields rose by nearly one and a half tons. Since 2005, Pakistan has accepted private maize rye hybrids and that, uh, as a result, yields rose from two to three tons per hectare. Bangladesh, private hybrids and acceptance of private death data helped data even more from one ton in 1991 to six tons in 2010. So some of these simple, straightforward reforms can have really pretty dramatic impact. Now, in the uh, probably the 30 seconds, oh no, the red paddle, but, but let, me, let me just say, because this uh, is <laughs> something I wanted to, to get to just quickly, because I think it feeds off a little bit from the, the discussion of the seed index here. And we, we, we heard uh, Ido mention very briefly about the TASI, which is this, uh, the African Seed Access Index, which looks at more, I think, more than, than the companies perform, sort of a slightly different dimension. It looks at more the regulatory environment. Um, and they have indicators across at least five different areas, research and development in terms of the numbers of seed breeders, varieties released, availability of foundation seed, industry competitiveness, I won't read through them all, uh, but policies and regulations, institutional support and service to the smallholders. So it's really looking more at the institutional context of, uh, of seed trade. And finally, um, which I guess you can, can go back and study, but I thought this was interesting. Um, but, but and the, that, what that spider graph shows is what, what, how, what's the different rankings of uh, the different seed sites. So you, you got the private companies consider that this area is more important than the government considers that area less important the research centers consider the other um, critical or not so critical. Um, unsurprisingly, government was really relatively little concerned about the number of government peristatals, um, but they were very concerned about fake seed and, and other sorts of different perceptions on, on that. So I hope that adds a little bit of a different dimension to the discussion of, of the index and, and seed trade opportunities. Thank you.